Hey everybody, Jeff Miller here, head of GMAT instruction at Target Test Prep. Very excited today to talk about seven tips on how to improve your accuracy on the GMAT. We'll talk about things about writing neatly, thinking carefully, slowing down everything you need so that you can improve your accuracy on the GMAT and improve your score. Tip number one, slow down and work carefully. Now, this might seem odd, right? Because on the GMAT, we know that you're timed. We know time is of the essence. We know that you can run out of time. However, if you are flying around the test and scribbling as fast as you can and trying to get through things too quickly, well, what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna make careless errors. It's just a fact. There's no way to avoid it. Now, I'm not saying to go, to go at a snail's pace, but I am saying you really need to be deliberate with what you're doing. Yes, yeah, slow down a little bit. Make sure that every step you're taking, you're really thinking about what you're doing and you're making careful and exact decisions. Mistakes will happen, even careless mistakes will happen when you're going slow. But the point is, if you can slow down, not rush, be organized in your test booklet or your whiteboard, I have a feeling that your careless errors will begin to dissipate and you will start to improve your accuracy on your GMAT. Tip number two, log your mistakes. Look, we all are gonna make mistakes throughout our GMAT prep, we are. The people that are gonna learn from them are gonna do better than those that don't. So how do you learn from them? Well, you log them, you create an error log so you can see what kind of mistakes you're making, when you're making them, and why you're making them. And if you are doing that and you're really putting the thought into why certain things are happening, whether, again, you're rushing and making careless errors or you're misusing concepts or you're just choosing the wrong answer because you're not taking uh, the problem far enough. If you know that those are happening, you can make real-time fixes. And I get it. We don't really want to look at our mistakes. We don't want to analyze what's wrong. We want to keep cruising through our studying. But trust me, if you can fix them in real time and fix them early and fix them often, you'll be in a place where they won't plague you on your practice exams and furthermore, they won't plague you on test day. And yes, your accuracy will begin to improve. Tip number three, develop deep content knowledge. Yes, it's great to learn math formulas and concepts and things like that, but if you're unable to use them and apply them, then it's going to be difficult to do well on the actual GMAT. For example, there's a ton of geometry formulas. Yeah, you could go to any equation guide like ours and you could learn all of those formulas such as the you know, area of an equilateral triangle or the ratios of 30, 60, 90 triangles. But the problem is if you don't actually learn how and when to apply them, they're just gonna be formulas in your brain. They're not gonna be usable formulas. So what can you do? Well. Make sure you're practicing a lot of questions using these formulas, not just one or two, but maybe eight to 10. So you can see the different ways in which these formulas may be applied, the different ways in which these concepts will be applied. So when you get to the test, you're not gonna only do well on the exact type of questions you saw, but rather you'll do well on any question testing a certain concept or a certain formula because you practice it so thoroughly and develop that deep content knowledge. Tip number four, and this is big, develop your confidence. We talk about doing content knowledge, deep mastery, you know, learning the content and the material, but how about confidence? Because here's the deal, even if you know all of those things and you're cruising along, if you get to the test and you don't have the confidence you need to know that you can succeed, it's going to be a rough day because I've said this before in, in a few videos, Bad things will happen on test day to anyone, even the most well-prepared test taker. So if you get something wrong on say question eight and you know you should have gotten it right, are you gonna have the confidence to keep moving through that exam and say, you know what, forget question eight, I've got the rest of these. Because that is so important and your psyche is so important because the moment you lose that on an exam, things can go downhill in a hurry. So leading up to your exam, use positive self-talk, tell yourself, Envision yourself doing well on the GMAT. Understand that you put in a lot of work and you know the material and you're gonna knock it out of the park. So if anything goes wrong on test day, you shrug it aside, you say, fine, I've lost the battle, I'm gonna win the war, and I'm not gonna let this one single thing affect me. And overall, 
your accuracy on the test will improve because you'll have the confidence to keep moving forward and doing the things you need to do to get a great GMAT score. Tip number five, improve the neatness of your handwriting and the organization of your work. Now this is also really important and something that might be overlooked. We're all about learning, right? But we sometimes forget the tactical idea of what happens in real time when you're on the test. If you're at home, you're using a whiteboard. If you're at the test center, you've got a dry erase notebook. In both instances, you're using markers. They're not fine tip pencils. They're not ballpoint pens. So you've got to get used to writing with those utensils. So first and foremost, start practicing with those items. Anytime you take a GMAT practice exam, use either the whiteboard or the dry erase notebook or and actually the marker that you'll be using. The point is that you need to get used to that. Now, furthermore, as you get used to the writing utensils and the dry erase notebook or dry erase whiteboard, um, you have to then learn to start writing neat on those, right? You can't fly through your work. If you see a math problem and you gotta do long division or multiplication, you can't scribble it down because the problem is you may get to the end of that calculation. And you may say, I have no idea what I just wrote and I can't read it. Or furthermore, on a, let's say you're taking notes on a reading comprehension question. Well, if you're not neat in how you're jotting down ideas from the reading comprehension passage, then you might as well have not done it in the first place. So the idea is practice using those things and then also make sure that when you're practicing, you're being pretty thoughtful in what you're writing. You're writing careful enough so it's not going to cause any issues at the end of the day. By doing so, again, you're going to see your accuracy improve. Tip number six, make sure you're answering the right question. This is very important for quant. I've seen so many students make the mistake. It happens more so in problem solving than it does data sufficiency. But what can happen is if you're dealing with an algebra problem or a word problem where there's multiple variables, let's say John's age and Terry's age, and you solve for John's age, but you really need to know Terry's age, well, a lot of times the trap answer of John's age is going to be in the answer choices. So if you solve for John's age first and then immediately look at the answers, you may put the wrong answer. So you got to be really careful. You can, you know, if you're looking for Terry's age, maybe put a T and then a circle around it. Something that makes it so you're not going to just casually take the wrong answer and move on. And the worst part about that is you're going to think that you got the question right. And that stinks because then you know, let's say you make five of those mistakes, you get to the end of the quant section, you say, well, why is my score not what it should be? Well, there's a good reason. So make sure you're answering the right question, your accuracy will improve, your score will be better, and you will be in a much better spot, especially in the quant section. Finally, tip number seven, another quant tip, pay attention to restricted information. This is probably more important in data efficiency, although it does have some relevance in problem solving. But how many times in the data efficiency question have you seen uh, X and Y are different or X is greater than zero? Y is a negative integer. And how many times have you missed that and then thought that the answer was something else? Probably happens more often than you think. The reason is it's a time test. We're trying to be efficient. We're trying to be fast and get the answer as soon as we can, but you can't forget about that restrictive information. It can crush your data efficiency score. So all that means is mark it down, give a second glance at the problem stem before inputting your answer, anything you have to do so that restrictive information doesn't fall through the cracks and really negatively affect how you answer your data efficiency questions. So that concludes today's video. I had a great time talking about seven tips to improve your accuracy on the GMAT. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our channel. We'll be adding more videos in the coming weeks. And of course, if there's videos you'd like to see, please leave a comment uh, under this video and we'd be happy to get to those videos or those ideas when we can. Thanks for coming everybody and we will talk soon.